Good day everyone, I am Kathleen Anitas and for this video, I'm going to discuss the topic about development of endogenous research methods. So, what is endogenous research methods? Endogenous research methods are also known as katutubong pamamaraan ng pananaliksin. So, I have here the approaches and methods of endogenous research. So, these are the pakikipagkuntuhan, panunuluyan, magdadalaw-dalaw, pakikiramdam, pakikisama, at pakapakapa. So, pakikipagkuntuhan. So, in this method, the researchers engage in a storytelling. So, it is an informal, free exchanging information. So, the participants and the researchers are exchanging information, thoughts, and ideas. Next is the panunuluyan. Panunuluyan is um, ito yung kung saan ang researchers is nasa-stay sa, sa, sa bahay ng participants while ano, conducting research. And with, of course, dapat with the consent of the families or the participants. Next is the pagdadalaw-dalaw. Kung ang panunuluyan ay kung saan ang isang research or researcher or the mananaliksik no, stay in the uh, sabalay sa isa ka participants. Ang pagdadalo-dalo naman, the researchers only occasionally visit the house of the participants. Next is the papikirandam. So, this method, researchers use his heals are her entirely feelings to justify if this the participants are ready to be part of his or her research. Next the pakikisama. In the word pakikisama. So getting along with the participants is also very important. And this ano uh, getting along with the participant through uh, frequent hangout. Next is the pakapakapa. Pakapakapa or the searching or means grouping is I will explain it later after this slides. So in 1875, Carmen Santiago, a postgraduate student, on psychology at UP did a study on pagkalalaki. Pagkalalaki means masculinity, maleness, and manhood. So, ang layunin ni, so, under sa klasa ni Amlikas, Carmen Santiago did a study on pagkalalaki. And, pagkalalaki, ang layunin ani na study is to bigyang kahulugan ang pagkalalaki na sangayon sa mga Pilipino at hindi sa description na mga banyaga no, or foreign studies or western studies. So this study was to be turning point in Philippine, Philippine social research for it was in his art articles, Santiago 1975 and 1977, that the pakapakapa or grouping approach was first introduced. So, Santiago's approach was an avant-garde for she believed that it's not necessary to have a clear-cut research design nor a review of little literature before embarking on research, especially if existing little materials of foreign to the culture being studied. So, ayun pa kay Santiago na it's not necessary though, to have a clear-cut research design. So, it's very um, unusual yung studies niya na gusto. So, ayun pa sa kanya, hindi daw necessary na to have a clear-cut research design or RRL. If, lalong-lalo na, para mag-start ng isang studies, no, lalong-lalo na if yung parang ideas na kinuhanan mo or the topic na kinuhanan mo ng ideas is um, nakabase sa uh, foreign the 10 materials of foreign to culture being studied parang nakabasa sa mga western tourists na parang malayo naman sa ating kultura, di ba? 
Next is Santiago and Enriquez, 1977. So, in a subsequent paper, she and Enriquez discussed the loopholes of Philippine social research. So, Santiago and Enriquez, na discuss nila yung loopholes of Philippine social research. That our research daw here in the Philippines is parang lack of relevance or importance. So, parang nakapasit daw, tama yung shadow sa mga Western methods, ganyan. So, ayun. And so, Western theories and overemphasizing data rather than on the process. So, Santiago and Enriquez, as an alternative, they did propose ways of making research more Filipino, which eventually became the backbone of indigenous research methods. So, one of the methods of the studies or of this indigenous research is the pakapakapa. So, pakapakapa is a um, scientific investigation as implied the term itself pakapakapa is an approach characterized by grouping, searching, and probing into an unsystematized mass of social cultural data to obtain order meaning and direction for research. So, Itong kakapakapa is the researchers or the pag-analysis. Hindi sila gumagamit ng ano, ano mga aklat mo or references maliban sa sarili nilang puro-puro kahit paninindigan or kakayahan. Next is next is the five basic guiding principles. So, there are at least five basic guiding principles relevant to the use of indigenous perspective and general and indigenous research methods in particular. So, first is the level of interactions of re or relationship that exists between the researchers and the researchers significantly determines the quality of the data obtained in the research process. So, ibang tao means the outsider at hindi ibang tao means one of us. So, it is recommended the first level under the hindi ibang tao which is pagkikipaglagayang loob and level or level of mutual trust, understanding, and rapport should be reached at the minimum in order to be assured for of good quality data. So, it's very important to know na we have a good relationship sa ito ang mga participants in order to obtain no, a good quality data. So, the dichotomy of the one of us in the outsider categories reflects the value of defining membership in a group which determines the boundaries or the extent of allowable behavior for a person. Many times, relationship between the researchers and the research participants continues long after the research is over. The levels of interactions are the same one at the Kappa classification. So, Kappa is a core concept in Philippine psychology. So, Kappa means is the uni unity of self and others. And Kappa has two categories, such as the ibang tao, pakikisama, I mean, pa ibang tao at hindi ibang tao. So, ibang tao means outsider, at ibang hindi ibang tao is one of us. So there are and there uh, there are interaction level under these categories of ibang tao. Da pakikituno, pakikisalamuha, pakikilahok, pakikibagay at pakikisama. Well, hindi ibang tao is the pakikipag uh, at the pakikipag lagay ang loob. Pakikisangkot at pakikisa. Second, the research participants should always be treated researchers as equal, if not superior, a fellow human being and not like a chemical whose sole function is to provide data. On this principle, certain behaviors in the part of the researcher are the stuff. So, of course, no. Um, but this one should always be treated researchers as equal. Because um, 
Do ginakwa ala to sila ng information ni sa ato ang topic that we should also be dead than parang as they write. Hindi na parang um, experimental animals lang din sila or for the sake lang sa ato ang studies. So we should also treat them equal or not like rights. And so example is in the method of pagtatanong tanong or asking questions marked by a casualness when in fact the researchers is truly determined to get answer to his latest questions. The research participants are free to ask the researchers as many questions as they want, therefore acting much like a researcher themselves. So just like researchers no nga parang gusto dito na makakuha o detailed or more um, information sa ilahang mga answers. This um, participant also has the right na mag-questions. Just like researchers. And next is third, the welfare of the research participants takes precedence over data obtained from them. The goal of the research is understanding but not at the expense of the very people from whom is this understanding will spring. The primary ethical and responsibility of researchers should be to the people and not to their institutions or funding agencies. So, so for the research, that the research is important, if the people is not important, and the people or participant is not important. So, when important, they should be safety at the own participants. No? So, for example, if the publication of research report will jeopardize the seclusion of the people, then it should not be continued. So, kung malagay sa panganib ang atong participants, then it should not be continued. So, if the needs of community are unearthed in the course of doing research on the different topic and it's within the researcher's capability to help, help then they should have. So, next is, so, fourth, the method to be used in research should be chosen on the basis of appropriateness to the population and not sophistication of the method that should be made to adapt to existing cultural norms. So, so the method na dapat atong gamitan is dapat appropriateness, appropriated or angkop sa ato ang population. So, for example, having somebody else but in the middle of the interview session is not something to be upset over. Once you, um, once you go through the process of getting to know each other first, and formally before asking questions on topics that are not common to people. So, researchers um, cannot expect people to adjust. So, researchers cannot be, ano, um, expect na ang mga participant ang mo adjust. So, it should be the researchers ang mo adjust ang mga participants or sa, sa mga tao. Also, the people. And therefore, mapasok tayo ang pakikiramdam or pakikiramdam is most needed in trying to um, in trying figure out how the uh, how the research method will work most effectively. Next, so the last one is the language of the people. The people should be language of research at all times. If this is not possible, the research should be um, tapped or take for assistance in its their own mother tongue that a person can truly express their own sentiments, sentiments, ideas, perceptions, and attitudes. So, so ano, um, the language, so if we conduct studies now, it's very important po na um, ang language daw na gamitong sa isa ka-participants is ihang own language na or the mother tongue language kaya um, it's more mas ma-express nila ang ilang ideas and ilang thoughts about ano nga tap. Some of indigenous research methods that have been identified are the itatanong-tanong, pagkikipagkwentuhan, ginabayang talakayan, at the 
kiu kali ang pagmamasid, kikisama, pagtatalaw-talaw, at pagmamuloy. And yep, that's the end of my uh, discussion about development of indigenous research methods. And thank you for listening.